let's express two qubit gates as linear combinations of Pauli matrix tensor products. First, let's begin with the controlled not gate. I'm going to use the notation C1x2. This tells us that qubit 1 is acting as the control qubit, and qubit 2 is acting as the target qubit. It is important that we specify which of the two qubits is the target and which is the control. So first, let's have a look at this order over here, where we have 1 and then 2. This can be represented in terms of Pauli matrix tensor products. So we're going to have a coefficient of 1 half over here. And the terms that we're going to have are actually just four terms. So first we're going to have identity, tensor product with identity. And then we're going to have Z identity. And then we're going to have identity X minus Z X. And these four terms are the only non-zero contributions. All other terms have coefficients of zero. And we can find the coefficients by taking the matrix representation in the computational basis and inserting that into the normalized version of the Frobenius inner product. So what we would do is we would take one of these combinations, we would multiply that with the matrix representation that we have over here, then we would evaluate the trace, and we would divide that by 1 on 4, or mul multiply by a factor of 1 on 4. The reason we have to divide by 4 is because that is the trace of the 4 by 4 identity matrix. All of these are 4 by 4 matrices. And this is just shorthand notation for the tensor product of Pauli matrices. We could explicitly write the tensor product symbol, which is a, a little x with a circle around it. So this is i tensor product i. And the order tells us which qubit we're dealing with. First we have qubit 1, then we have qubit 2. So you can see that 1 half is the coefficient for all of these terms. And if we take all of the coefficients, and we square the individual coefficients, and then take the sum, we should get 1. That would mean that this is normalized. So if we do that, we will actually, if we square this half, we get a quarter, and then we have four quarters, and that gives us 1. Now, note that this over here has a minus sign, so the coefficient of this z tensor product x term actually has a minus 1 half. And this minus 1 half, when it gets squared, turns into plus 1 quarter. So it does work in the end, and this is a normalized uh, state. You can think of this as a vector, and the entries of the vector are actually coefficients of these tensor products. And we covered this in the previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist, where we introduced that normalized version of the Frobenius inner product. So this example over here works if we have the control qubit being qubit 1. But we also have an alternative version we, of the controlled not gate, we could have 2 over here, and we could have 1 over here. So what would that give us? What we would have to do is swap all of these terms around. So this ii term would not get affected, because it's the same. And this term would become iz. This term would become xi. And over here we would have minus xz. So that's what happens if we swap the role of the two qubits. We're dealing with a two-qubit system, and this is a unitary operator that acts on that two-qubit system. So in this case over here, where we have C2x1, qubit 2 is acting as the control qubit, and the tar target qubit is qubit 1. So if we were to draw these out symbolically in a quantum circuit diagram, we would just be flipping these guys around. So the big circle with the cross, that would be flipped and put in the other position. So we have seen matrix representations of these, of these operators, and we've seen their symbolic representations as well in previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. Now, let's make some observations and write this out in a slightly different form. Over here, in, in this term, we can see we have an identity and an identity occurring on the right. And over here, we have an x and an x occurring on the right. Because these are tensor products, we can actually separate those out. And we can do that in this form. 
So that's actually going to give us the identity plus Pauli Z on two tensor product with the identity over here. That's on the right. And what about this combination over here? Well, we can write that as identity minus Z on two, and then we tensor product with Pauli X. So have a look at what I've done over here. I have distributed this factor of a half inside, and I've grouped these first two terms and these second two terms. I have uh, factored out the tensor product with the identity over here from the right, and I've factored out the tensor product with Pauli X from the right as well. And we can identify these guys as projectors, and we can write them in terms of Dirac notation. So I'll write this as the projector. It's a ket bra form. So we have 0, 0 in the ket bra, and then we do a tensor product with the identity, and then we can also write this term as the projector, which has ones over here. So this is also a ket bra, but it has ones. And this is tensor product with Pauli X. And this allows us to easily construct the matrix representation. This over here corresponds to the top left quadrant of a four by four matrix. And this over here corresponds to the bottom right quadrant. So in the top left, we have the identity matrix. And in the bottom right, we have the Pauli X matrix. And in general, if we have some kind of controlled unitary gate, over here, we will have the unitary gate. So that is how we uh, can write the controlled unitary gate in terms of this Dirac notation. And I and X can also be written uh, in Dirac notation as the sums of Ket's, uh, Ket bra combinations. So anytime you have a Ket and a bra, you're actually using that to uh, construct an operator. So this it can be thought of as a matrix. And specifically, this corresponds to uh, the top left entry in a two by two matrix. So we're taking a two by two matrix and a tensor product with another two by two matrix, and this constructs a four by four matrix. So all the objects that we're adding here are four by four matrices. We can do something very similar uh, in this swapped over version. So over here, the identity is on the left. So we will have identity tensor product i plus z on two, and then we will have the x on the left, tensor product i minus z on two, and this is equivalent to identity tensor product the ket bra with zero, zero, and then we have x, and then we have the tensor product with this ket bra that has ones over here. Now I'm using a, a slight shorthand notation for this ket bra, uh, in the middle of the ket bra, it does kind of look like a Pauli X, but this is not a Pauli X. This is a ket followed by a bra. And it's the same over here. We have ket followed by bra. And this over here by itself, this is Pauli X, and this is Pauli X. So you can see when we swap the role of these two qubits, we swap the labeling and we say, this one is the control and this one is the target, or this one is the target and this one is the control. All we have to do is swap the order in this tensor product. Because now, this qubit 1 is playing the role that qubit 2 played up here. So that is what we have with the controlled NOT gate. So these are the two versions of the controlled NOT gate, which depend on which qubit is the target. So now, we can move on to the controlled Z gate. And the controlled Z gate is also called the controlled phase gate. So let's have a look at the controlled Z gate. And we're going we're to see something very interesting. So let's do the same reasoning over here. Now we've seen... Uh, in previous videos that bit flips can be turned into phase flips by sandwiching between Hadamards. So the Hadamard operator allows us to translate between X's and Z's. So if we were to sandwich the X's uh, uh, between Hadamards, we would actually get Z's. And that allows us to read off this definition and see what uh, this linear combination for this control phase gate will be. And I will do that over here. What we have to do is consider only the second entry over here, because we're only looking at the target qubit. And if we sandwich the target qubit between two Hadamards, that's going to turn these x's into z's. So we're going to still have ii. That's going to remain unchanged. We'll have zi. That is also going to remain unchanged. But over here, we're going to have iz. And then over here, we're going to have zz. What if we swap the role of these two qubits? What if we exchange qubit 1 for qubit 2? 
that's going to give us C2, Z1. If we do that, then all we have to do is swap the order of these terms. So we're going to have II plus IZ, we're swapping these guys around, and then this becomes ZI, and then we have ZZ. You can see the II and the ZZ term, they are unaffected because it's the same uh, matrix being tensor producted on both uh, qubits. But over here, we have ZI turning into IZ and IZ turning into ZI. So, but we have the sum of these guys over here. So because addition of matrices is commutative, these two forms are equivalent. So there is actually no need to specify which is the control and which is the target for the control Z gate. But that's just a special case. In general, uh, we do have to worry about which is the control and which is the target. Because you can see that over here, it does make a difference. This matrix representation is not equal to this matrix representation. These are two different matrices. So let's also use this kind of uh, reasoning up here. And I'll write that out over here. We're going to have I plus Z on 2. And that's going to be tensor product with the identity. And then we're going to have I minus Z on 2 tensor product with Pauli Z. You can see Pauli Z is common over here. And then if we go over here, we're going to write this in terms of the Ket bra combinations. We have the 0, 0 Ket bra tensor product with the identity, plus the 1, 1 Ket bra tensor product with Pauli Z. And if we do the swapped over version, we're going to have identity tensor product I plus Z on 2, plus Z tensor product, I, uh, this should be I over here. I'll just erase this guy over here. So we have I followed by minus Z. So why are these guys, I, wh how, why, why can we conclude that these guys give the projectors? Well, if you write these out in matrix representations, you will see that taking the sum of I and Z and dividing by two is equivalent to the matrix representation of this Ket bra. And also taking the difference uh, will also give you the other entry. It will give you the other projector, which has this 1-1 one, one element. So those co correspond to diagonal ones. This one corresponds to a 1 in the top left, and this one corresponds to a 1 in the bottom right. So these are 2 by 2 matrices. And then when we take the tensor product, we get 4 by 4 matrices. So I'll write this out over here. We have the identity tensor product with the cat bra 0, 0. And then we have Z tensor product with the cat bra 1, 1. So that's what we've got over here. And you can see these guys are all swapped over. And if you write this out as a matrix uh, representation, and you write this out as a matrix representation, you're going to get exactly the same matrix. That's because it doesn't matter. You can see just from, from this uh, expression over here, when we express it in terms of a linear combination of Pauli matrix tensor products, you can see that these guys are equivalent. So from that, we can conclude that CZ, I won't write any uh, extra indices over here because it's redundant. CZ can be thought of as the sandwich that we use to construct these guys. We can either sandwich this, this guy in between Hadamards, or we can sandwich this guy between Hadamards. Let's see how we would write that sandwich out. We have to take the identity tensor product with the Hadamard gate. I'll write this out explicitly to make it clear. And in the middle, we're going to put C1x2. And then over here, we're going to put the identity tensor product, the Hadamard. So this tells us that the target qubit is being sandwiched. So you can see that qubit 2 is the target qubit, and we're sandwiching it in between two H's. And that's going to turn this X into a Z. But alternatively, we could also take this guy and we could sandwich the target qubit. But if we do that, we need to keep in mind that the target qubit is now this guy over here. It's 1. So we have to sandwich the first qubit between Hadamards. So we have to swap these guys around. And that's going to give us Hadamard tensor product with the identity. And then we put C2x1 over here. And then we have Hadamard tensor product with the identity. So that's what's going on. All we have to do is sandwich the uh, target qubit again. And the target qubit is actually 1. So we have this 1 over here. So this x1 tells us that the first qubit, qubit 1, is the target. And if we put this h and this h around there, that's going to turn this into a z. So either way, 
we're going to get the controlled Z gate. And we saw symbolic representations of these in previous videos. And you can actually think of that as a circuit identity. And you always have to keep in mind that the Hadamards have to sandwich the target qubit. If you put them in the control qubit, it's not going to work. You're not going to get this controlled uh, Z gate. Now, let's see something similar with the swap gate. So the swap gate we saw as an example uh, in the previous video. And let's write out the swap gate. So the swap gate has uh, the following representation. We have one half of identity, tensor product identity, plus x, tensor product x, plus y, tensor product y, and then z, tensor product z. So this is the representation we're dealing with. And we can actually write this in two different ways. We can write this as C1 x2, then C2 x1, and then C1 x2. What are we doing over here? We're sandwiching this flipped version of the C0 gate between two of these C0 gates. Alternatively, we can also do it this way. We could put C2 x1 over here, or we could put uh, then, then we would have to change these guys around. That would give us C1, X2 in the middle. And then we need this guy to be the same. So we have C2, X1. You can see all I've done over here is swap these guys around. This 1, 2, 1, 2, uh, which is the bread of the sandwich, gets changed to 2, 1, 2, 1. And in the middle, the 2, 1 gets turned to a 1, 2. Let's write these guys out in symbolic representations. We can write these blue guys over here. So we could write this top guy as this 1, 2. So I'll put qubit 1 first and then qubit 2 later. So that's going to give us this. And we have a target. And then we have this combination over here, circle. And then this combination over here. So this is a symbolic representation. And I'll draw it like this. Ooh, I'll make this connect over here. And this is what it's going to look like. So this little dot over here denotes the control, and the target is denoted by this target symbol over here. So this is a, a visual way to depict what is going on over here. So we have a sandwich of this term, which is the 2, 1 term. So 2 is the control, and 1 is the target. And we're sandwiching it between the other two cases. And we can also flip this around, and that would also be equivalent. We could have uh, this. I'll write this out like this. So all we have to do is flip these guys around, and that's going to give us this circuit diagram. And this circuit diagram is equivalent. It's just a flipped over version. So the swap gate, which can also be written uh, using this symbol, uh, which kind of visually depicts swapping, or it can be depicted with this symbol, which also visually depicts swapping, it can be expressed in terms of these C0 gates. You just have to flip the C0 gate that is in the middle. So as long as the guys in, that are the bread of the sandwich are the same, and the one that's in the middle, the lettuce of the sandwich, that has to be different, that's going to give you uh, this product over here. And we've also seen how to turn this over here into a symbolic representation. We saw that in a previous video. But I will also write it out over here just to make it explicitly clear. We can write this as a C0 gate. This is the symbol for C0, sandwiched between two Hadamard gates. So I'll put two Hadamard gates over here. And this is what the circuit diagram is going to look like. So this is the control. This is the target. And we're sandwiching the target. Alternatively, we could swap these guys around. And we would put the target up here. And we would have to put the Hadamards around here like this. And then we would see that this circuit diagram would emerge. So over here, this is the control, and this is the target, and we're sandwiching the target. So that sandwich is allowing us to translate between the language of bit flips and the language of phase flips. And both of these diagrams can actually be represented using this symbol. So this is the symbol for the control Z gate. And the control Z gate is a type of phase gate. It's a controlled phase gate. And in general, uh, phase gates introduce a little phase shift onto the 1-1 one, one term. So that 1-1 one, one term 
uh, is one of those computational basis vectors. So we've seen the Pauli matrix tensor product linear combinations over here, and we're including the identity operator with the Pauli matrices. So we have four of those two by two matrices, and we're taking tensor products to construct four by four matrices. And we're treating them as orthonormal basis vectors uh, with some kind of inner product that is defined using the trace. And that allows us to create these representations over here. And we've also seen it represented in this Dirac notation over here. And we looked at these circuit identities, and we noticed that these circuit identities can also be expressed symbolically or visually using this method over here. Now, this visual representation makes it very clear what's going on. We have this first line, which tells us the first qubit, and a second line, which tells us the second qubit. And this notation for the controlled NOT gate uh, is very clear. It tells us which qubit is acting as the control and which is acting as the target. And you can see that the swap gate has some variation. You can either represent it as this or as this. And it is equivalent to write either of these combinations. They are logically equivalent. You're going to have the same matrix representation for a unitary operator. One thing that is very important to stress on is that when we look at these diagrams, we can choose the convention to go from left to right. So if these qubit states are moving along through time, first we will act on this one, then this one, then this one. We go from left to right. But when we actually turn this into an equation in Dirac notation, and we're acting on a ket state, we first have to put the rightmost matrix. We have to apply the one that's closest to the ket. So this one would go furthest right, then we'd have this one, and then we would have this one. So this one would actually be on furthest to the left. It wouldn't be furthest to the right. So we reverse the order when we uh, write these out as matrices acting on a column vector. So that is just one thing that it takes getting used to. It's all about convention. You could also choose the convention that we read this from right to left. It is just a convention. Both are uh, reasonable as long as you are consistent with your choice. So this gives us a lot of tools that we can use to create quantum circuits. And if you want to see the other videos where we discuss these topics, you can find those videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.